This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. What the hell inspired you to start a new con? Why didn't we, didn't we have enough cons? You, you know, we probably do. Uh, but you know, uh, Adrian uh, Crenshaw, uh, Martin Boss, and myself, we all decided to uh, just get together and start a, a small conference for for hackers in their underwear, right now. No, we we're not we're not going to play that game about those hackers that are wearing sweatshirts, listening to Hack Five in their headphones. But. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not giving you help for it. I think this is great, and it's a, it's a great location because you think about, you know, or at least our major ones like Shimukana on the East Coast, Torcon on the West Coast, and then, you know, Vegas is, well, Vegas is Vegas. Right. It's, it's good to come here because we've seen, uh, it's been a great turnout, over 1,000 people for your first one. Yeah. Wow. And uh, the turnout's been interesting because it's the kinds of people that we wouldn't see at the other cons that are, like, you know, within, you know, a day's drive. Absolutely. I mean, there's no Midwe uh, Midwestern or Central type conference that's here, so we decided that, that Louisville for us was uh, probably the best place. I mean, the Hyatt itself, you know, you have the bar on the second floor, which everybody, I mean, that was a huge success. I mean, everybody was just there socializing, drinking, and then you walk right outside and you have the biggest party area, you know, well, I guess the biggest party in Louisville is not the biggest party area really in a lot of the places, but I mean, you know, bars and, and food and everything is all right there. So for us, it was a huge success. I mean, we never anticipated it being anywhere where it was, so I'm blown away. Great. Well, what was the biggest challenge kind of putting this together? You know, we've never done a conference before. You know, we have no idea what it takes. Um, the only thing that we know is we're con goers. And so, you know, going to a conference is we see things that we would like to see or see things that are different or, you know, cool ideas. And, uh, you know, and Bruce was, was uh, Bruce and Heidi were instrumental in getting us um, all, all set up at first. You know, uh, when they first started off, we started paying them a lot of uh, around how they do their conference and, and how they started off and things that they've learned. And they were more than willing to help out. And uh, Aaron and Heidi were just, you know, my wife, uh, Aaron, going back and forth. And uh, I think it's a similar uh, type concept with those two. Uh, my wife basically handled everything from, from, you know, making sure that we're organized because we're, you know, ADD and scrolled all over the place. So, um, you know, it was, it was really cool that uh, it all really came together. But, I mean, I think some of the challenges we had were we really had no idea what we're doing. You know, I mean, so we wanted to make sure that when we came here, we did as much as we possibly could to make sure that everybody was taken care of and had a good time. Uh, and try to keep it as, as cheap as we possibly could to make sure that we made up, you know, for the conference and went from there. So, nice. Well, it's definitely a community, and it has that vibe. And there have been plenty of great uh, talks. I know that you gave one with uh, Kevin Mitnick. I, I, a lot of people probably know uh, that you're, you know, you're famous for uh, Social Engineering Toolkit as well as Fast Track. Uh, I'd love to hear what the latest is with those. Sure. Uh, so, in, in in Kevin and I's talk, I released a new version of Set, which was uh, 2.1. Uh, which I spent about four months of development in, and uh, and this 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 version for me was it hit home because I um, st uh, basically incorporated Fast Track now into the Social Engineer Toolkit, and so you have all of the options that you would have in Fast Track uh, in in set. Uh, and, and and for the kid that's sitting in his boxers that doesn't that isn't familiar with uh, with uh, Fast Track, real quick. And Fast, Fast Track was the the first tool that I decided to write. You know, I had been programming a little bit here and there. Then I'm like, hey, I'm gonna you know create something cool because I'd gone penetration tests all the time, and I saw things that I could automate or do things that were really cool that aren't in anything else, and started to automate those so that you can actually leverage them in a penetration test and make penetration tests easier. And so that's where I really started with Fast Track. And uh, the new version of Set, uh, when I wrote it, I completely rehauled the entire thing. I mean, there's not a line of code that's the same in this version as it was um, in the old version of Fast Track. I mean, Fast Track was one of the first programs I had actually really written. So. Don't go back and look at that code. It's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, don't look at my code either. Yes, yes. Um, but no, it was. It, it, it turned out really good. Um, and then we also incorporated. I rewrote the uh, the Java applet attack, um, which uh, I have something big to tell too. Um, rewrote the Java applet attack uh, to incorporate the shellcode exec attack, uh, which is basically um, you have you're able to drop alphanumeric shellcode straight into memory uh, through the Java applet without ever having to touch disk. Now, what's the advantage of dropping your your code into memory without touching the disk? What we what we've al always struggled with um, in set and in Metasploit in general is you know AV companies are really trying to hit those payloads very significant. So even with encoders like Shikata or um, backdooring legitimate executables or you know digital signature stealing or packing or cryptors, I mean they still have portions of them that are legitimate in nature in the executables that they're triggering on. Well, yeah, I mean it's kind of a pain in the ass in the sense that it's like all right we're here sharing our payloads with each other and then. The you know antivirus vendors McAfee are all sitting there going oh cool we like those payloads too let's just put them into the signature and it's like wah 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 yeah and you know the the, the Metasploit guys you know kind of kind of 
came to the conclusion of we're not going to continue just rewrite stuff over and over and over again for this. You know, you need to find your way of, of going about it. And so, you know, sets kind of had the evolution of, of doing different things to try to evade antivirus. And we incorporate Metasploit-based payloads as well as uh, one that I wrote custom for the set. Uh, set it's called the Set Interactive Shell. And, um, you know, it uses a, a couple of different techniques, like it'll um, pack it and then re and obfuscate the living daylights out of the executable, which has been very effective for a long time. Uh, but again, now those are starting to get detected with a few of them. So I think like four out of 28 now, or four out of 43 detected now, which, you know, so they're starting to get more popular. And so with Shellcode Exec, um, the reason why I decided to do that is Meterpreter never touches disk. There's no signature to do. So it goes straight into memory, nothing scanning it, you know, and. Nothing scanning it. Nothing scanning. So, so, so the antivirus, is, they're not even checking memory off. There's nothing, and there's no, there's no memory checks that are going. Any, any antivirus company that claims they're doing, you know, memory checks are, 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 are crazy. I mean, a lot of times what they're monitoring on is uh, registry changes or system API calls, and, and, and I would say 99.9% .9 don't have system API call monitoring. I mean, you have to have, you know, kernel level injection to be able to see everything for that, and um, so or drivers, and um, so, you know, there's really nothing out there that has been detecting it. So I ran it through pretty much everything. Uh, that I possibly could, and it's been working beautiful and haven't had any type of uh, antivirus signatures flag on it. So long story short, we shouldn't have to worry about antivirus and set anymore. So, Dude, that is fantastic. And uh, I know that you've also been having a lot of fun with the, uh, the Teensy. Could you tell us a little bit about what kind of, you know, human interface device attacks you're, you're using? Yeah. Um, so this, this time around, we, um, Josh Kelly and myself, uh, Josh Kelly's a co-worker. He's been doing a lot of work and research on uh, the Teensy devices. And uh, he's actually talking um, very shortly on what he was able to do with uh, the Tensi device. And um, what he's essentially working on is the ability to um, write a small stager that opens a COM port onto the uh, Windows device and then, and then reinitialize itself as a COM adapter and then transfer all the information over via COM. So instead of actually having to type out all of those things, you can transfer you know, a two five meg file in just a couple seconds versus actually having to worry about typing it on there anyway. Yeah, right now we're like uh, injecting things via base64 encoded ASCII or even just hex right into the command prompt into a file, either a C script or a PowerShell thing to turn that into an executable. Uh, we're looking at the same thing. Uh, you know, you open a COM port and it's like, boom. And you know, and you can do it over other things too. I mean, Josh has been researching it, and I um, mean, you can do network adapters. So you open up, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, what's interesting about that is you open up with a network adapter, and then you replay a PCAP. Yeah, absolutely. And you can and you can just have that trigger and have all that information basically sent to then right straight to this. So you could you could have what looks like a web server, but it's actually just an automated like you know. Send out, you, you, you can right out, and you're done. It's your binary, you know. I mean, that's, and that's that's absolutely legitimate. And uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of different things that we're playing with. What we wanted to get out of it was, you know, if you're going and you're doing a, a quick hit, you know, going into a machine that that you want to get into, you don't want to have to sit there for 10 minutes as you're writing a binary out, you know. Uh, <laughs> I tried that. I tried that. I tried to take the entire 63 kilobyte. Um, netcat on a windows xp machine and i was like okay sure i'll just you know convert that over to hex and then uh have a type all three uh, 63 <laughs> three kilobytes in the 10 minutes yeah it's 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 ridiculous i mean there's no feasible way you can do it i just imagine the james bond movie where he's like ah oh, and then i'm gonna get in and then uh, oh 10 minutes yeah hang on hang on hang on <laughs> yeah. he's just sitting there for 10 minutes <laughs> and then the girl from ipanema starts playing <laughs> yeah so not a very feasible attack, and and so what, jo what Josh is working on, being able to plug it in, um, you don't have to worry about having to have another network cable plug into it, you know, and try to figure out where that's at, or unplug it and then plug it in, you know. So um, Josh wants to be able to, with you know, one USB device, plug it in, initialize itself as a USB, write the quick stager, deinitialize itself, reinitialize as a COM adapter, and then start transferring information over. So it it requires a pretty big rehaul of um, the Adreno-based libraries. So we've been, uh, Josh has been with, working with Rob Simon on merging the two together so that we basically have one, you know, unique library that we can call for the, the initialization and de deinitialization of those, so. We, we got to get you guys some ducks because we actually got three UARTs, so we, we might be able to do that without having to deinitialize and reinitialize, you know, dual, have them both at the same time would be a lot easier. Well, I got one of them right now, so, um, you know, we'll definitely be playing with them as we go. The, for the, for the yeah, we got to get that up and set, you know? Absolutely. I, I, hey, you, it's, our, it's already done, so I'm going to start working on the, uh, the rubber ducky when I get home and start incorporating the, the attack vectors in the set. So I gotta ask, what's coming up for DerbyCon? You're gonna continue it here? Yes, we're we're absolutely planning on keeping it here. Um, there's a few changes that are gonna happen. We're gonna include an additional tracks. So we'll have four tracks. Um, one will be for more newer uh, people's information security. So it's not always like the the crazy technical talks or you know whatever's going on. There's people that are relatively new to the industry can come and learn um, in a collaborative environment. But the the main you know feel that we wanted to get for this was 
you know, we're all here, we're all friends. There's no rock stars. There's no, um, you know, people that are better than each other. It's really just to come together as a community and, and we're all as one, you know. So, I mean, hopefully that message came clear and it seemed like it because everybody was in the hallway hanging out with each other, you know. All the, the big guys and, the, you know, names in the industry were all hanging out with everybody, all partying with everybody. We were all one, you know. It was no... You're you're absolutely right. You've got you know everybody from the the guy that just discovered that you can start having your way with computers to you know Kevin Mitnick uh, and everybody's walking around having a good time. I also got to say that you in particular have a lot of heart and um, and that this is one of the things that that makes this con unique in that you know, there aren't schmoo balls and we're not putting cement in toilets or anything like that. But <laughs> the man hug ticket. Tell me about the inspiration behind the man hug ticket before I redeem this. <laughs> well, so I actually had nothing to do with the man hug ticket itself. However, I did, I did um, repeat that I would give hugs to anybody anytime because I'm a hugger. And uh, so Integral um, decided to take it on himself to make a magic ticket for the one ticket get free of a relic man hug. And so I've literally hugged, um, I would say, you know, there's, there's over a thousand people here. I've hugged them at least twice or five times. So I've done about 5,000 hugs, I would say. Uh, just alone these past three days. So I've been, I'm very happy. I, I'm, I'm hugged. I'm, I never hug out. So, you know, I can, I can hug anytime. Oh, oh, but here we come. That's good stuff. Oh yeah. Got to be ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, ten minutes. We, we gotta wait for the tinsy to go out. Oh yeah. Okay. So B sixty four and code. <laughs> anyway. Go, let's go. <laughs> come to Derby Con. Get yourself a hug. One thing. One thing I forgot to mention, by the way. Um, I did something with the new version of set, but I'm getting it reviewed by the EFF right now to make sure I don't get sued. Why's that? Wait, wait, wait. Why would you get sued? So, um, interesting enough, uh, if you look at at how. Java released the Java applets. Um, you could uh, originally, like about a year and a half ago, uh, do code signing uh, by your own self sign certificate on the. Well, you have to be able to self sign. How else would you test? Right. And so um, what happened is it, when you would self sign it, the publisher would show up as whatever you want it to be. So Microsoft, Google, whatever you want it to be. So yeah, I mean, and we've been doing that for forever, but you know. It, that's just what it shows up in the name field. That's not actually Microsoft Cert. Absolutely right. But it, you know, for a, an end user, um, you know, when you actually go through and um, they you go to the Java app and it pops up, it would show publisher Microsoft. You know, so for the end user, they had no idea. So after releasing the set, uh, after releasing set, um, they released an update uh, to the Java applets and for for the JDK, and uh, now it shows up as a publisher as a big unknown. So it's less, you know, enticing for a victim because they don't know who it is. But still, I still find it's like a 95, 98 percent success rate when I'm actually doing uh, my attacks. And so what I did was um, to get around that is uh, I bought an LLC in the state of Ohio and uh, and basically purchased a code signing certificate that was legitimate in nature called Verified Publisher. So now <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the name of your company? Verified Publisher. Verified Publisher. So I registered the state of Ohio with uh, Verified Publisher, and I now have a code signing certificate for Verified Publisher. So when, when I run Java code, I always use Verified Publisher. They're very trustworthy. I mean, they're verified. And they're a publisher. But it just goes to show you that, I mean, an attacker, if he's going after an organization or company, he's going to spend 30 bucks to register an LLC. He's going to spend 200 bucks to buy the code signing certificate, you know, and he's going to do it anyway. So what's the point of what we're doing with that? In, in the well, but, but, but it's secure because there was a code signing authority. And obviously, if Java or if Sun didn't want you to be able to uh, provide your most valuable clients with uh, code from verified publisher, they wouldn't have given it to you. That's right, absolutely. I mean, and they do the corporate verification where they actually check to make sure that your LLC is legitimate, and that is it. They looked up your Dun and Bradshaw number. Actually, you didn't even have DNBs. You just, they just said... Yeah, yeah, number, and that's it, the, the tax ID, basically. So you look that up, everything's good, you got your cert. Yeah, it's about, it's about a week-long process. I'm about to go register the phone company. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, Kevin Mitnick's got an, uh, a good one, too. Uh, he he uh, registered Oracle Java, so he he doesn't actually he doesn't actually have the code signing certificate or anything. But uh, you know we 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 basically I mean it just goes to show you what you can register. I mean you can register anything you want to. So, so why does the EFF have to get involved? I mean I, I understand how um, Sun might be a little upset, but they could just revoke the cert. And, and that's that that could be a viable uh, reaction to it. What I what I want to look at. Yeah, I mean that you have you you're not. You know, you have no right to that, sir. It's a privilege. It's right. they, you know, they're the company that's issued it to you. And if they're like, no, we don't want to do business, it's their choice to not deal, do business with a verified publisher. <laughs> it, absolutely. But, you know, they, they could go, go crazy and try to strong arm you to, to remove it and, and, you know, recant anything you've ever done. But what I'm going to be doing is distributing it, you know, signing it into set with the Java app, but distributing it to the masses. And it is a, a hacking tool, albeit, you know, I obviously only want to use for good. I can't necessarily, you know, verify that it is being used for good. 
Um, so I do hope that, you know, the, well, I hope the route that they don't take is they don't revoke it at all because, I mean, it's a legitimate um, application that's registered, you know, copyrighted and everything else, you know, so it's not like it's, you know, something that is a hacker tool that someone's using. So, I mean, hopefully it's a legitimate cert. They don't revoke it, but you never know. Yeah, and, you know, if it's not you doing it, it's somebody else. I mean, come on, think about it. These company names, Zanga, what? So you just go and register a couple of letters and people are going to click yes anyway. Absolutely. I mean, no one knows if you go to a website if it's, you know, who actually developed the Java app or who, people don't even care. I mean, listen, the unknown did absolutely nothing to reduce my footprint of how the Java app works. I just want to make sure that it's meticulous and perfect as you're doing attack. If you have a 2% margin, I can increase it on by, you know, just by doing that itself. Then that's been, you know, it, it did its job. So Awesome. Well, thanks for spending some time talking to us. It's awesome. All right. Next year, big plan. So uh, definitely check out DerbyCon, and uh, we look forward to it. I'm gonna go get some sleep. All right, sounds good. Thanks, man. There are two things IT professionals and their clients have in common. They want the job done right, and they want it done fast. And that's why I highly recommend go to Assist Express by Citrix for anyone in IT. It's got the fastest, most reliable support. Go to Assist Express puts clients at ease with a simple, secure, remote support, and it puts you in a position to do what you do best: access, diagnose, and resolve the problem. With the fastest support experience and the ability to service multiple clients at once, you'll actually be increasing revenue while improving your customer service reputation. Take care of clients while they're away with the unattended support feature and get unlimited use for one flat fee. When it comes to remote support tools, I think GoToAssist Express is the best. So fast, so reliable, don't wait. Start using GoToAssist Express today. Hack5 viewers can try it free for 30 days. Go to gotoassist.com slash hak5. Again, that's gotoassist.com slash hack5 for a free trial. It's time for the nibble. Using Alt-Tab is the usual to switch windows in the Windows operating system, but if you use Windows plus Tab to see it in 3D, it's a lot easier to find them. Also, you can press Control Windows Tab to toggle this and then switch around the screens with Tab or with your mouse. Thanks to Damon for sending in this nibble, and if you guys have one, send it over to hack5.org nibble.